I only use the scales from the belly of mm -hmm. the python right up the middle. So it kind of wastes a lot of python because I only use right. the middle part, the middle belly. Only the best cuts. But I think it, it's what makes the brand special. Hey, I'm GQ Style Editor Will Welch. I'm here at Barney's with the legendary Don C. <laughs> Don, let's get right into to begin with. Can you just like take us through a Just Don cap? I sort of reinvented the style of baseball caps with the Python brim, right. the strap, the gold buckle, and the tab. Take us back to the history of the hats, like the spark of the idea. I was inspired by the Buck 50 cap. The Buck 50 cap was a cap that was like the quintessential baller cap of the late 80s and 90s for um, drug dealers in Chicago because <laughs> there were no rappers at the Let's time. just tell them like it is. <laughs> they were sold in liquor stores and convenience stores. It was mostly seamstresses from that local neighborhood. They would glue fake python, fake snakeskin <laughs> on top of the brim and then sew a strap on the back. <laughs> and the guys who could afford a baseball cap that had fake python and a fake python strap on the back were drug dealers because they were $150 right. in the 80s. That's how they got the name Buck 50. Chicago in the 80s, this was like a, a, a local custom thing, right? It's definitely a Chicago thing. You know, different parts of the country have heard about the Buck 50, but it really hasn't gotten much shine. So I'm happy to kind of help educate the youngsters today about the Buck 50 and its history in my city and, you know, put a modern twist on it. Now you can buy one at Barney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new Buck 50. <laughs> uh, working on different clothing projects, I would always try to figure out, man, who's gonna bring the Buck 50 back? So I tried to sell the idea, not for money. Nobody wanted to bite it. So I said, let me just make these. And then fortunately, a few of my friends wore them and I kind of turned it into a brand. I love this game, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> One thing I laugh at is that it's like a guy will wear an uh, old Buck 50 and some of the kids will say, hey, that's a fake Don C hat. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's the original inspiration of my idea. So Don, uh, guys with a lot of different personal style wear your hats, um, but what's the key for somebody who's like considering going this direction, maybe somebody who's never worn Python skin before, uh, how do you pull it off? Maybe start with a black on black. That's usually the entry level. After that, you wanna go for a second or third, you wanna spice up your life. So you wanna live with a little color or maybe even a metallic skin. Sometimes some guy's flake of python is hanging over the brim mm -hmm. where guys say, oh, I really like that. I think that's part of what makes the brand unique because no two hats are exactly the same. There's some guys even say, I don't like to order them on the internet because I like to go to the store and it'll be right, like right. the same cap but they want to pick the one they want. I, I love that because I'm a, I'm a consumer like that. Hey, this shirt, the collar is a little different than that one. I noticed the inconsistencies in product. Right. So I think it's cool where a product that's purposely inconsistent. You can go to the store and drive your salesperson crazy, <laughs> asking for every hat out of the stock room until you find the one that calls your name. Absolutely. You. you gotta be brave to binge your Python brand. It's okay, man. Yeah. It, it, it was a snake. It was Sounds flexing brave. all over the <laughs> flexing right. all over the earth. It's okay. You it was that? a snake. <laughs> it was a real snake. Now it's a hat. Yeah. <laughs>